day on Malaysia's Fahentian Islands is undoubtedly one you'll want to remember and most likely capture, but with some of the world's best diving. Many of the most memorable moments and encounters will actually take place below the waves and getting them on film is not as easy as you may think. And Dave Powell should know. He's been traveling the world taking underwater photographs for years. And today will be teaching me the art. Often divers come back after a dive thinking that they've captured something beautiful, uh, only to review the photos and be disappointed that they've ended up with what essentially is a, a blue mess. The first job is making sure the camera is safe from the water. An aluminium case does the job. When we close the door, shut this. This keeps the water out. And then I'm ready to go. For my trip, I'll be using full scuba gear and a top-of-the-range compact camera. But you don't need high-end equipment to take good photos. You don't have to be a diver. You can just be a snorkeler, a waterproof compact camera that is maybe a couple of hundred pounds will give you great results. We're heading out to a dive site just north of Pula Besar, the larger of Malaysia's Pahentian Islands. Although I can already dive, the first thing I notice is that as soon as I try and hold a camera in the water, even the basics seem to become a challenge. When you're scuba diving, you want to maintain a nice neutral buoyancy. You don't want to be floating up and you don't want to be sinking so that you're going to crash into the bottom. Which is what I seem to spend most of my time doing. So Dave takes me back to basics. Stay calm. Use your breathing to maintain buoyancy. Now that's under control, I've got a chance on getting the right angle for a perfect shot. We'll be shooting either horizontally, like this, to give us a nice depth uh, with a nice blue background, or sometimes it's better to shoot up, so you're going to be looking at the nice blue water. We won't be shooting down. Say if this was a fish, you don't want to be taking a photo of it like that, because it's never going to be distant from the background, and it creates a very messy image. As we practice in the distance, a shark keep cool, still, and the black tip might approach. Unfortunately, I decided to chase it. Turns out a shark is quicker than me, and my photo won't be winning any prizes at all. Most people's reaction is to swim after it as fast as possible before it swims away. This just makes fish swim away quicker. So we're going to be calmly approaching a subject and once we're in the position, carefully taking a picture without scaring the fish away. Gradually, I get the hang of it. Clownfish never leave their anemones. Even I can't get this one wrong, right? The final and most important thing I need to remember is to protect the reef. So we'll all be always, always, always put the reef first and the photography second. Yeah? As we will be getting quite low to shoot up. And we don't want to injure yourself or the reef. Dave keeps an eye on me to make sure my fins don't crash into the precious and fragile reef. Being close enough to the coral to take a good photo while keeping my unwieldy equipment and limbs away from the seabed is difficult. Finally, the sort of encounter I've been waiting for. A huge shoal of yellow-tailed snapper and, hopefully, a photo to be proud of. After a couple of days diving, I might not be up there with the professionals. But I think some of our shots do capture the true beauty of this underwater world.